Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Lucas Cagliarini, and I am uh, responsible for uh, all the international uh, development and business for uh, Expert Systems. Uh, today was supposed to be here also Marco Varone, our CTO and founder. Unfortunately, he had a family emergency, so he's uh, on the phone. So he's available right now, he's available to answer to any, uh, any questions. I have a good uh, technical background, but I'm sure that Marco is going to be able to answer to more questions than I can. Um, the objective of today's presentation is mainly to uh, give you initially an overview of our semantic technology and uh, um, see a direct application in the area of uh, classifying um, online content in order to provide much more targeted advertising. I try to have a presentation that is as uh, uh, practical as possible, so I will use a few slides. However, um, all the presentation is going to be available in the slide set, so we will distribute that uh, hopefully at the end of the, of the presentation. First few world few words about uh, Expert System. Expert System is a company that has been around for a while. Uh, we have been uh, uh, developing uh, linguistic technology and uh, shipping semantic uh, search engines and uh, um, text analysis software since uh, the end of the 90s. We've been uh, um, active in Italy mainly for, uh, for many years. And uh, a couple of years ago, we uh, started our international expansion. Uh, we've been uh, growing uh, very fast, especially in the last few years. And we've always been profitable. So we actually funded all our development through uh, real customers. Uh, we have been uh, uh, deploying, as I said, for more than 10 years. And our customers are kind of uh, in many different sectors inside the enterprise uh, business. And also, we are supplying technology as OEM to um, different companies. Here you see listed Twine and Microsoft. So uh, basically, general introduction about our technology. Um, we actually provide uh, a technology that uh, taken in input any kind of text in any kind of format at the end of the day. Uh, we perform a full, deep uh, uh, linguistic and semantic analysis of the content. So basically, what does it mean? We will see that a little bit more in detail during the actual demo. But basically, we take, uh, we go through all the different, the four steps that we usually go through as people when we read uh, a document. Okay, so we look at the form, we look at how the different concepts are related to each other, and then based on the actual context, we perform what is called the full disambiguation. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, uh, among you there's a, a good understanding of um, a linguistic technology, but I want also to give this basic information for people who have uh, not really heard in the past about uh, this kind of technologies. The outcome of the analysis, which is done uh, um, leveraging a very rich uh, knowledge base, our semantic network, is a conceptual map. So it's a structural representation of the content that then can be used for different applications. In the, in, in, uh, practically today, we will focus on uh, its application in terms of classifying online content and uh, being able to provide a very rich understanding of the content for, um, for advertisement purposes. So these are the four different steps that uh, our technology covers. Morphological analysis, parsing, sentence analysis, so understand how the actual sentence is structured to then have all the information available to perform uh, a full semantic disambiguation. I'll jump uh, immediately into, this is nothing else than a, a window on the technology. So this is not an application, it's just uh, the engine, and I'm going to run the engine on some, initially on some sample sentences to give you the, uh, the to try to represent what do we do differently, which kind of uh, um, depth we can provide in the analysis. And that is the basis of the application for the, for the semantic uh, uh, advertisement. Uh, feel free to ask uh, questions uh, if uh, things are not clear. Um, I'll try to be as fast and as uh, uh, precise as possible. So 
So I'm using the first sentence to uh, describe something that I presented before. So the capability of the system to understand the structure of the sentence, which is at the basis to uh, really um, collect the information that are useful for the disambiguation. In this case, the system highlights, I, I run a short analysis on the, um, on the text, and the system highlights in red what is the main clause inside the sentence, and in green, what is the subordinate clause. This helps in understanding that there is an actual direct relationship between different concepts that have been identified in the sentence. For example, the system understands that tasty, in this case, it is linked to the sandwich. It is not linked to John, which is actually the nearest noun, if you want, but it's linked to the sandwich, as correctly we would understand immediately if we read the text. At the same time, the system understands that uh, the second sentence is actually related to giving the sandwich to me. So the system performs a, an afro resolution in this case and understand that that is related to the sandwich and that uh, uh, John gave to me is related to the sandwich. So the first element of the depth of our analysis is really the sentence analysis. Understand how the clause are structured inside the text and how the different concepts are related to each other. Any questions? Sorry? English only? No, we cover different languages. We cover um, Italian, English, Arabic, and German today. We are deploying uh, two different, two more languages in next year. The second, I'm using the second sentence, which if you want, it's a little bit uh, extreme because I'm using eat with the meaning which is not the most common meaning for eat. I use gas with two different meanings in the same sentence because I want to highlight the second element, which is the capability to perform the full disambiguation. Okay? So I run the analysis, and uh, the system is telling me that eat, in this case, means to consume, that gas, in this case, means gasoline, while in this other case means the accelerator. Okay? So all of this is based on leveraging the information that is available out of the box inside our knowledge base or semantic net. Let me open up the semantic net one second. Here in the center, first I'll give you some numbers. We have for the English language today more than 350,000 concepts and more than 2 million links between these concepts. All of this is part of uh, the development, the years of, uh, of development that we put into creating the actual, um, uh, applica if you want, uh, platform. What you see here in the center, can you see well? It's a bit small. but Here in the center, you have, for example, the 12 different meanings of the word gas in English. In this instance, the correct definition is gasoline. And gasoline is linked inside this uh, uh, knowledge, in, inside this graph, to many different concepts by many different kinds of links. So this richness helps in performing the disambiguation. For example, gasoline is a kind of hydrocarbon, which is a kind of fuel which at the end of the day is, uh, is an object. And here on the right you see all the different kinds of um, gasoline. But this is only one of the several different kinds of links that we have available in the semantic net. I'll, I'll just show you some of them. For example, the verb subject. This is uh, linking gasoline with the verbs that gasoline can be the subject of. If you change the meaning, you actually change also the, 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 the verbs that uh, um, gas can be the subject of. Then you have other relationships. For example, the verb object. Again, these are verbs that gasoline in this case, can be the object of. If you change the meaning, you change the verb. And then one other interesting relationship is what we call um, concept and corpus, which basically is telling us that when gasoline it is used with that meaning, all the concepts that you see linked to that meaning of gasoline tend to be present in documents that belong to that specific domain where gasoline is usually used. Okay? All of this is information that is used and processed through the analysis to perform the, the, the disambiguation. Now, um, let me just uh, 
run a more concrete example. Um, I'm just uh, taking one article. It's just been published. The idea is that I want to show um, the actual a practical example of the technology analyzing a real article so that you can have a feeling also of another important element that makes this platform um, something that can work in uh, in an environment where you have a huge amount of information. Right now I'm just doing a simulation of uh, a crawling and, uh, and analysis of a text. I clean up one second. Okay. So this is uh, the time the system takes to process a, an article. We can process up to 60 kilobyte of text per second on a recent dual core server. Your question? Uh, the, um, I just want to show you the, what is the actual outcome without any training, just uh, leveraging the existing knowledge of the extraction capability, the categorization capability, and other features that are coming out of the box and, and, in, and present basically that richness that then can, can help in increasing significantly the precision in activities of this sort. So this is the part related to the um, entity extraction. So what you see here are all the people that have been present in uh, this article. One thing that is very important is that compared to other technologies that are doing similar things, we don't count uh, on lists. So basically we don't uh, need to continuously uh, manage and update the lists. We actually recognize entities based on their semantic role inside the sentences. Now we can, in, 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 we can, in, we can increase uh, and add to our knowledge base lists, but we usually work just by extracting based on their semantic role. Here you see the organizations. Here you see other uh, element like uh, measures, geographic location, and other concepts that the system tend to uh, guess they have some relevancy, but even it's not able out of the box to assign and understand specifically. But in any case, these are the, the, um, the result of the, of the actual entity extraction piece. We can extract, uh, we have out of the box 14 entities, which include addresses, uh, email address, uh, uh, and other entities that are not showing up here because probably they're not present in this article. The other things that I want to show you is, which is very relevant for the topic of uh, the categorization of content is that out of the box we have a taxonomy which is used to classify the content. So this is the taxonomy that is out of the box. We can work with this taxonomy, we can work with any taxonomy because we have complete control on the system, but this is just to give an idea of what can come out of the box. So this is, in this case the article is mainly about politics. I don't think there are any other topics that are really relevant because the, the, the system assigns a much, much higher uh, level to, uh, to the category of politics. Another thing that happens is that the system does an automatic tagging. So these are the most relevant uh, concepts and entities present in the article. When I mean most, most relevant, I mean that semantically, not, it's not based on frequency, it's not based on um, how many times a specific word is actually used but it's based on their semantic relevancy, we can tag automatically and extract what are the most semantic relevant elements in the, in the content. Also, the system performs a, I would not call it a summarization, but it was just uh, with the same logic, it extracts the three most relevant sentences, semantically most relevant sentences inside the, corp uh, the corpus of information. So at the end of this out-of-the-box analysis, you have a full semantic analysis of the content and disambiguation of the terms. You have the 
uh, categorization, you have the tagging. All these elements are then available to be, to be used by any kind of other application. Are there any questions? Yeah. How do we do that? Yeah, so basically, like, to, to, to evaluate the semantic relevancy, we take into account different elements. For example, uh, which kind of uh, uh, role a specific concept plays inside uh, the, a sentence, for example. So a subject is, by definition, more relevant than other in other section. We uh, consider element related to, for example, position inside uh, um, the text. And uh, we also um, uh, put this together with the result of the algorithm that evaluates the actual relevancy of the sentences. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, so the question is, uh, uh, there are out there uh, many uh, standardized tests to measure the uh, precision and recall of um, entity extraction. Is that your question, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, the question is, how, how do we compare right that? We, have, we had several uh, tests in uh, uh, real, uh, if you want, real business uh, scenarios where we compare, uh, and we also um, use the, the w in this comparison, we have been tested on those kind of documents that have been already automatically tagged. So we have all the numbers and we can share the numbers. Uh, so yeah. One uh, last uh, view of the content is uh, what I, I consider basically a clustering of all the elements at the higher level in the hierarchy. Okay, so again, what does it mean? It means that uh, the system understands that in this content we have different things. For example, we have uh, uh, many verb of knowledge. We have many verb of interaction, for example. All of those are basically a way to view the content that creates a certain level of richness that enable you then to do things, to do really um, to integrate into application that require. When you have a complete control on the text, you actually have much more availability, much more tools available to refine your um, your aspect. Could you say anything about how your network compares to WordNet? Yes. Is, is it based on? Did it start as WordNet? Uh, n no. So um, the idea is that the idea started with WordNet. Okay. Now, when when we actually when uh, Marco. Um, and, and Stefano, our two founders, actually started to actually think about using WordNet, they realized that uh, WordNet uh, doesn't have the level of depth and the level of, uh, and, and the scope uh, is not uh, consistent to really provide uh, a good quality result in a typical business environment, okay? So in addition, there was the requirement to work in real business scenario, there was the requirement to have a system that was going to be fast and performing, okay? So these two drivers were at the base of the fact that even if the structure um, seems similar in terms of nodes linked to each other, the actual development is um, completely different. Here I have just uh, an, an idea of four different things that really uh, make uh, our semantic net completely a completely different uh, element. For example, we have a much richer number of links between the concepts compared to, um, compared to WordNet. Here you see some of them. We have even more than this. But this is just to give you an idea of uh, um, how much richer is actually the number, the, 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 the structure of the, of the thing, of the semantic net. Another element is that uh, um, each node is associated to different level of attributes, and this is a major and important element to uh, drive things like automatic categorization and entity extraction, okay? So these are all, the, all the, the hierarchies, basically, of the nodes of the semantic net are actually, at the end of the day, under 
uh, these top level um, categories of attributes. And then each concept is also linked to specific domains. Okay? So all these are some of the elements that make our semantic net a completely different thing compared to, to WordNet. Did I answer your question? It did. I have a follow-up question. When you say that two entities are related, and I saw percentages um, on your earlier display, like 20%, were those set up by human beings, or were those based on um, corpus analysis? The domain associated to the concepts? Um, or the association among different concepts? Um, in general, did you build up it's all build up, uh, by it's all, hand or it's all by build machine? Up, it's all built up manually. Thank you. By expert linguists. Okay. Um, just going back a little bit to uh, the uh, to the actual uh, um, performance of the um, of the the platform. Here you see some of the numbers. Um, the with a recent uh, dual core server. We basically can process up to 60 kilobytes of text uh, per second. We have, uh, as you see, for the English semantic net, more than 320,000 concepts. This is only related to the number of uh, scene set, uh, sorry, uh, subnomen and supernomen. And uh, at the end of the day, this is the number, the total number of links that you have. All of this you see the richness doesn't really impact performance because as you see, even with a small laptop, you can process a page in less than a second at the end of the day. 60 kilobytes of text is three or four pages of text. <clears throat> you have any questions? Now let me jump uh, to instead to uh, like the main topic of, uh, of uh, today's presentation, which is uh, our application to provide much more targeted advertisement to online content. So basically, we took uh, the capability of the system to really understand the content, <clears throat> and we turned it into a platform that enabled publishers to have a much more clear and dynamic understanding of the content inside their platform. This is valid for uh, typical publisher like newspapers and so forth, and this is valid also for um, social networks and related. At the same time, we provide a mechanism that links the result of the analysis to a preset uh, definition of target that you can create based on your um, requirements and provide this information to anyone who is on the side of the network advertisement or on the side of the actual end customer. Conceptually, we take a text, we, clear, we clean up the text to understand the main element inside the text, we perform the full analysis that I showed before, and that, as an output, it gives you a categorization based on a taxonomy. In the current version, which is the, our first beta version, we have a taxonomy of more than 440 categories. We are now building uh, for the final release. A, we integrate this taxonomy with a taxonomy that was developed with uh, people analyzing online uh, content, and we bring it up to 660 categories and three, do, four different levels. We perform the extraction. What you will see in this example, in what we have available today, is the extraction of uh, the main entities. But we are extending this by adding things like, for example, products. For example, um, uh, other element that could drive uh, the, um, a more targeted advertisement. At the end of the day, the information is passed to the ad server in a way that is not different from the way it is passed today. Today, it is passed a keyword, or you know, it's a sequence of character. At the end of the day, we're going to give that as an input to the ad server. So we can integrate with any ad server application that is already running on the site. Now, let me, instead of using slides, let me just log in. So, 
So what do you see here? Here on the right, you see the category tree that I mentioned before, okay? So it's 440 categories. As I mentioned, we are optimizing it even more for online content, but it's already right now rich. So it's two, in some cases, three different levels. So all the content is processed and is categorized based on this taxonomy. I'll talk later about this aspect, because we, which, is an, which is an additional way to actually create profiling. On the left, you have profiles. And for profiles, I mean, here I made very simple cases, you know, like I did demographic profile. But here you can create any kind of profiles. And the idea is that you link to these profiles based on in this case, your knowledge of the profile you want to create, some of the categories that you have identified here on the right. OK? So uh, in this case, it's pretty obvious. I did the 210, and I, and I put uh, toys and comics. And inside comics, you know, like the, there's another tag of a category that is linked to that. Is this, uh, is this clear? Now, one other element that is, uh, so this is basically you attribute, you assign a category to a specific profile. The profile is the actual information that goes out to the, to the ad server. Now, another element that is important is that in addition to the actual uh, categorization based on the content, you can actually create also a categorization that is, if you want, uh, I, I call it emotional, but it's just just because for lack of a better definition. So the idea is that the content is linked to the uh, objective interest of people. Okay, So uh, someone is interested in soccer, in golf, in whatever, whatever uh, sport car, folk music, whatever. But there's also a different level of reaction that uh, uh, our customers, because at the end of the day, this is used by um, uh, advertisement uh, company, they're telling us that there's also a, what we call an emotional reaction to the content. So I'm looking at something that is, for example, scary. So scary can be anything from someone that uh, you know got lost on the on the forest, a house that is burned, um, a, a terrorist act, war, or whatever. And reading this, even if these are different actual elements in terms of precise content, one is related to crime, another thing is related to weather, another thing is related to other things, the actual reaction that a, a user can have might be of a, one kind. You know, when I see something, maybe a profile of a person, let's say in her 40s, over 40s, when sees something that is uh, threatening the lifestyle, they look for security. Okay? So this is a different way to link your content to potential um, relevant advertising. Is this by any chance clear? Or? OK. Um, now let's just uh, take a look at the actual examples. Going to some pages. Again, I'm just, uh, in this case, simulating what happens in reality in the background. So basically, this is the user, user access to this page. The information is uh, um, sent to uh, the, the, the semantic advertiser servers. The content is analyzed. And based on the content analyzed, the system gives you back, for example, these three domains. OK, so this main domain, the demographic uh, class of 18, 25 year old, followed by 11, 17, and then 26, 65. And here is the explanation. So this is an article mainly about American football. OK, this is not 
only an article about sport, it's actually an article about American football. Sport, of course, is relevant. Commercial, economic, and finance seems less relevant. Now, this specifically, I just copied the old page, so there might be some noise around there. And these are the people mentioned. So this is additional information that can, can, can drive your uh, targetization of uh, uh, the advertisement. These are the geographic locations. These are the organizations, products, nothing there. This is the semantically more relevant concept. So this is basically all the result of the analysis that we saw separately. And these are some additional, if you want, uh, debugger information on why this thing came out. Let me just do another example. This is an article just published today about a crime in Oakland. And again, I'm simulating the the result of the analysis. Again, an article the target may, may be based on the content, the the uh, demographic class of over 65, mention crime, pol police, criminal law, law, and catering, because it's about pizzeria. But as you can see, even if uh, pizzeria appears in the title, because semantically is irrelevant, it just shows up as a kind of a lower category. And it doesn't really drive them. Yes? So the question, the question is, what happens with a page that is a hub for, for different, uh, different news, right? It's basically doing something very similar. For example, we can take, uh, I found this is a good example because, no, sorry again. Um, I found this good example because this is a, a um, Technorati is a, is a site that changes always the, the content, also belonging to many different, because like for example, for a CNN website, even if the news actually change, the actual structure of the content is pretty much similar. So there's a, something about politics usually here, or something about something, you know, big disaster that happened, usually the, the topic of that. Technorati from that point of view is a better example because the content really changes significantly. The idea is basically it takes all the content available, um, assigns priorities, if you want, based on position. But like the center maybe has a little bit of higher priority. But in reality, analyzes everything that is available and then creates an average out of what are the topics mentioned there. So if you would try to do this, I'm doing it live, so I don't know exactly what is going to come out, but oops, sorry. Politic, commerce, economics, internet, and software based on this taxonomy. If we go back and take a look at the content. This is, this is interesting because as you can see here, 
uh, for some unknown reason, because maybe there's Paris. <laughs> this is a good example. Probably because there's Paris, the, see, the Technorati associate that automatically to travel. Even if it's an article about Paris Hilton that is complaining about uh, John McCain uh, advertisement, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So when you see, so Technorati in its classification sees this as the most important blog about travel. The result of our analysis instead is telling us. <clears throat> But in reality, this is mainly about politics. So the two articles at the center in reality are about politics, and the system correctly identifies them about politics. <clears throat> you ever tried, instead of trying to do, you know, kind of average everything together, do you ever try to indicate that the source actually has multiple topics and try to come up with information? Absolutely. Topics Absolutely. That's, that's uh, the result of... Uh, <clears throat> the crawling exercise, if you want. Now, out of the box of this demo, you have just, it takes the input and just analyzes all of that. You can actually, especially when you look at specific sources that uh, are relevant, more relevant, because you're working with the publisher and so on, you have different pieces of information that tells you, you know, for example, here there are three topics. So you extract the three topics as separate, and you put them in, and, and processing in the analysis together. At the end of the day, however, because probably you will have to feed uh, one advertisement. You need to find some sort of uh, one advertisement. Well, it's not true, but uh, uh, it's if it's the home page, you have selected number of advertisements. You can, you can decide which kind of information you want to pass to the ad server. Also, you need to understand how the ad server is linked to that page. If it's one feed, at the end of the day, you can pass uh, a limited number of information. <coughs> Let's go to some different kind of content. It's a blog. Now, one thing to say is that the obviously uh, the, the the quantity of content available helps in terms of the precision of the of the categorization. OK, so mainly about music, maybe about um, musical instruments, singing, show, and so on. Zoology, we don't know, <laughs> but it's not very relevant. <clears throat> OK, um, we have 10 minutes. So um, if there are any questions, or uh, if there are even more technical questions where we want to involve uh, uh, Marco, um, I can try to answer. I uh, know. No, OK. They told me it's not online, so I'll try to handle all the information. Use the mic. Can you use the mic? Yes. So I just noticed that on one of your slides, you said something about compounds. Um, yes. Maybe detecting compounds. Could you speak about that at all? Yeah. OK, I think all of this is related to the way that we actually have built the knowledge base. OK, so this is not something that comes out of uh, an automatic training or um, you know, just an extraction of uh, corpus, uh, reference corpus. This is all knowledge that is actually um, available in our semantic net. So one capability of the semantic engine based, again, on the capability to understand the relationship between concepts is to uh, verify in the, f in the parsing phase that may be a concept like uh, um, credit card or something like that. It's not really made of two different words, but it's just one word, okay? 
And so the presence of this information inside the semantic net can help the validation. And so you have that credit card is actually a concept that is very different from credit and card. Same as, you know, cookbook, if you want. There's a concept of cook, the concept of book, but cookbook is actually by itself a different, a different um, uh, concept. I didn't answer you, you know, did the answer, did the answer enough? Or it's, it's actually part of the knowledge that is available inside the, the, um, the knowledge, the, the, the semantic net that helps the engine to perform the disambiguation. And so at that point, to validate that, for example, credit card is a concept itself, or step on it is a concept itself, and not a combination of three different phrases. Are there any other? Yeah. What kind of performance tests have you done to compare it to sort of more big of words construct? Because that, even though it's simple, people say it works surprisingly better than you'd think. So, uh, like, um, like a, a big of words construct where you just completely throw away any ordering information you could get from the words. Um, so any sort of just entering, just entering keywords at the end, not related to. Yeah, well, just just talking about the counts of different word occurrences in the article, and then for categor categorization purposes, how does this can how much extra performance boost do you get in categorization by using, adding the complete by yeah adding using this technology the actual boost in terms of precision of the categorization or in terms yeah any sort of test yeah just, just uh, uh, I'm using ex an example um, uh, we uh, in the moment when the categorization exercise becomes more complex so you don't work out of 20 categories, 25 categories, but you work in the hundreds. Mm -hmm. We have a, a real case, a real customer scenario. For example, one case in the, in the pharmaceutical industry where we were scoring, or actually one better case is in the, for a news, um, a news, um, uh, news feed for a publishing company. We were scoring a precision of 85, 86% on a category three of hundreds of categories that before they were doing it manual, they were scoring 85%. And with a statistic tool, with that number of categories, we were not going beyond 53, 54%. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the kind of, it, obviously, this is not a fixed number. If your categories are 10 or 20, yeah. you don't have that kind of difference in the performance. The more you go into really, you need to understand granularly the content, the better this gap grows. Okay. Okay. Did I answer your question? Uh, Not really. Yeah, yeah, I was just wondering if you had any charts. That <laughs> now you have a case study, <laughs> but it's a customer implementation, the one I was talking before. Um, it, it's something that we can, uh, unfortunately, Marco is not on the phone right now. It's something that we, I, we can provide. So, Mar uh, Stefan, can you take a note of that? Uh, okay. Hello. Hi. Uh, do you, are you, have any plans on releasing your souped up word net, or at least through a service, or are you just, is it? Through a service. Like, do, do you, are you going to release it to public interest at all? To public present? interest, uh, uh, right now, it's something that we are, we are thinking of. Okay. 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 Right now, it seems like a tremendous resource. Yeah, and, uh, and that's the reason why we're thinking of buying, doing this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, one thing that we are evaluating is, uh, in, terms of uh, in terms of business, if you want, uh, um, to be sure that we have a model attached that uh, we can support at the end of the day. But that's one of the ideas. The, 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 what we really want to, to do is to um, create a service that can be an enabler for, in this case, the semantic uh, advertisement, but could be an enabler of semantic web applications, if you want, you know, like being able to throw a text to and get back the tagged, uh, the tagged information. Yeah. So that's uh, that's the direction we are thinking about going. Because I'd, I'd thank you if you would, because WordNet seems like a good idea, but when you use it, it doesn't yeah, really exactly. work very well. That's at exactly. All. So, 
anyway. Okay, so we count to one additional vote in favor of. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm Red. I was wondering, um, so you have linguistic experts determining the semantic relevance? Determining the, sem the semantic relevance in, uh, of, um, so we have a linguist expert that in creating the semantic net, for example, assign the right attribute to each of the concepts, okay? okay. So for example, um, the verb to serve in a, with the meaning of serving like volleyball or it's linked, strictly linked to the domain of sport, okay? Because it's usually used only, with that meaning is usually only uh, used in that domain. So that kind of exercise is done by expert linguists. In the moment when the semantic net is enriched, there's an analysis of this kind, and these attributes are assigned to each concept. Okay. In terms of uh, the uh, evaluating the relevancy inside a text, this is actually a result of the uh, automatic analysis. It's not something that you need to, um, if you want, customize all the time. Okay? It's something that once that the knowledge is there, then it is used for the analysis. Nice. Okay. So the okay. So there is a like uh, a relevance standard that is. Yeah, relevance. I guess. I guess I'm actually yeah. more curious about the um, how the semantic relevance either is determined. Uh, how is determined? Initially, in, in, or, yeah. yeah, or or how it relates to the social relevance, or or if that even if that is a factor. Um, so in. Uh, the, the, in, in, in determining the, the, the semantic relevancy inside, uh, inside an article are taken into, in the, algor the algorithm takes into consideration uh, the result of uh, typical linguistic studies, okay? So, you know, like in, the, in, in a language, uh, a, you know, a subject is more relevant, I'm making it easy, but a subject is more relevant uh, of an object in terms of defining what is imp an important element inside that. Something that is written at the beginning of paragraph tend to be more relevant than something written in the last uh, line of the paragraph. This is make it very simple. All this is built in the algorithm that understands, for example, that <coughs> John McCain is the most important element in this article. Okay, so all of this is part of, of that. So the algorithm is the result of the, the um, typical ana linguistic analysis, the result of a linguistic work. But when it is applied, it's applied independently from the domain, unless you do some customization to change this uh, relevancy based on the domain, which is not the case of the of the demo that I did today. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Hi. Uh, looks like Can they I need to. Question? Oh, great. A question. question from Santa Monica. Um, it wasn't clear earlier whether. Um, the linguist, I mean, the, 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 how the relation between two concepts, the weight between the concept A and concept B in your ontology is established. That is, you seem to be suggesting that it's done uh, by, by hand, by linguist experts. Um, and uh, I guess what I was wondering about is how confident you can be or how, how well can a, a person say, hey, this is 0.5 rather than 0.6, than rather than 0.7, and you know what kind of overhead eventually this uh, this requires, you know, in terms of human effort. Um, when when you when you're uh, you're saying the weight uh, of the links, uh, um, are you referring to the semantic uh, network? Yes, I was referring to essentially your ontology. So okay. you know, for example, that uh, you know uh, a, a hummingbird is uh, a kind of bird, and uh, an ostrich is a kind of bird, but you know they are somewhat differently so. You know, there is a, some sort of prototypical thing. You know, pro something, some uh, items are prototypical instances of a concept, and others are much more distant. Do you model this in your ontology at all? Are much more distant. Uh, but in your example, I, I mean, one might, I don't understand what the distance is in your example. Uh, if do, do are two different kind of birds, 
um, there are two different kinds of birds. Maybe one is most com more common, the other, the other, uh, another one less common. But um, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a link, uh, in one of the link, uh, like for example, in this kind of link, which is the kind of, what you find here on the right is uh, the kind of gasoline. And there might be some kind of heavy nafta if you want. So there's a degree of separation that is, makes uh, a kind of heavy nafta uh, not directly linked to gasoline, but more to heavy nafta. But um, if you use this, only this kind of relationship, I, I don't, there, there's not a weight associated to the part of relationship, okay? They're all, if you want, 100% part of relationship. Did I answer? Yeah, yeah okay. Then, uh, as I understand, if I understand correctly, the answer is that actually all the relations are binary relations. Either you have them or <laughs> Okay, much more clear. <laughs> That's exactly it. Okay, since it's 12 o'clock, um, uh, we'd better end, but um, I think our speaker would be happy to answer questions or have people join us for lunch. Um, or give out business cards if you'd like further contact. And if you send me the slides, I'll make them available no, to Googlers. So okay. thank you, Luca. Thank you very much.